How has Apple dinged the universe? This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Clear. Get to the front of the line faster, safer, touchless. Get two months of Clear free at clearme.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is Mac Voices Live. We do this every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on YouTube and Facebook. We'd love to have you join us in the chat room on either platform, but we do have an announcement tonight. Um, Right now, and I'm going to get it right this time because we had to do four takes to get it right. Um, We are no longer going to be streaming live on Facebook. We will continue to 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 stream live on YouTube. The reason is pretty simple. We just don't have a lot of people showing up in the Facebook chat room. Um, I I threw this question out uh, in a couple of different ways to our audience, and I've had no one say, yes, I absolutely only watch on Facebook. So you'll be able to go over to YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Mac Voices TV, and see the live stream, just like always, participate with it in the chat over there. I will be posting a link in Facebook as the show goes live to remind you that you can go over there and watch live. And if you have feedback as to why you love Facebook and really think we should stay there by all means um, to do so, there is a third party service involved. Um, It's called restream. And there is a charge for that to be able to broadcast to two different places at once. And so this is one way of economizing just a little bit and hopefully not losing anybody. And of course, the edited versions of uh, Mac Voices Live will always be posted to Facebook as well as YouTube. So if you have thoughts on this or whatever, let me know. But you got to act quick because the subscription to Restream runs out soon. Um, Chuck at MacVoices.com. So that's what's going on. And so I hope next week to see you over on YouTube if you're if you are in Facebook right now. And it's nice. There's one person. There, there's one person in the in in the chat room who's harassing me already over on Facebook. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Web. <laughs> so let's go around the table and find out who's here tonight, and then we'll tell you what we're going to talk about. Um, so I'm going to take my screen as it appears because, as usual, um, things have juggled around a little bit. So first up, uh, joining us, Mr. Frank Petrie. Frank, great to have yes. you. We haven't seen you for a while. Uh yeah, where have I been? I don't know, but it's good to have you know. back. I don't, I, I don't, you don't I, know. I, 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 I never know. I want to point out one thing, though. Jeff, it's a shame he's not here to hear the announcement that we're going straight YouTube because YouTube announced this week they're going to allow cursing. Yeehaw. And I've watched a bunch of YouTubes today, and they didn't wait long to jump on that bandwagon. <laughs> I didn't know it wasn't what? allowed. I didn't, I didn't either. Yeah. Well, apparently, I, I, well, I don't know the background of it. All I know is I, I read this article. They said now I, I guess they're not going to sort of look over their shoulder if it happens or slips. People are coming out now just. Mm. Hmm. Weird, well, but that, okay. That won't Jeff be us. Yeah, that won't. <laughs> <laughs> that won't be us. That we, just, we we try to keep 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 this uh, fairly clean. Yeah. It is it's a family Mark. show. Going to be well, for now. About that. All Jeff yeah. does is yell underpants. Yes, yeah, but that's not what Mark yells. No, no, no. That's true. David Ginsburg is here. David, welcome. Good to have you. Good to be here, Chuck. Yes, um, I I don't curse, so I guess that doesn't affect me. So. Well, at, least, at least not on YouTube, anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Kelly Gamont has returned once again. Kelly, good to see <laughs> you. Like it or not, <laughs> it's nice to be here. <laughs> guy Searle, the guy with the itchy trigger finger. What the French? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the French toast? Something. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're already going downhill. Oh, we God. are. Uh, <laughs> and it happened so melon farming fast. Yeah. Whoa. Jim, Jim Ray is here. Thank you, Jim, for coming. I need help corralling this crew. <laughs> and you think you're going to get that from Jim? Yes. Don't get involved, Jim. Don't yes, do it. I'm the man. Back away, Jim. And back away. I, you don't I, want any I, of this. Back slowly. <laughs> And I want to shout out to Silverado Chevy on the chat, who turns out is somebody I know. 
Hey. Oh, good. <laughs> yes. Good to have you, Silverado. Thanks for thanks for coming in. Uh, let's see. Last but absolutely not least, um, Mr. J. Yeah. J. 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 Oh God, you guys, he's vapor locked. <laughs> what? No, I. Somebody is throwing things up on the screen here. That's not. Yes, I know, Jay Miller. I'm sorry. I, well, fizzbang, marble, warble, like duck bill platypus. I don't know what. I don't know. I, it's it's water, folks. I swear, it's water. I wish it wasn't. Then I'd have an excuse. Gin, vodka. Jay, Jay, how are you? I'm you sorry. I'm I'm, so, I'm sorry. I've got too many too many things happening on my screen. I'm I'm doing good. Um. If you want, I'll, I'll get off your screen and, and sit down at my chair. That way you can focus. No, no, no. But but you said something in the pre-show that intrigues me. Did you say you have seven microphones connected to this Mac? I'm, I mean, technically I have three, four, <laughs> Anything five. that starts technically, like you've already got, like Guy has a little bit one, of a crush on you right now. One, two, Definite three, crush. Uh, four... Five, six, my bad. Well, five and the sixth one is plugged into the other machine in the other room. Okay, I'm tempted to ask why, but I'm afraid then that you and Guy will get into no, you'll, some you'll get kind of <laughs> Yeah, this is not, the, today is not the microphone episode. In case one doesn't sound good. <laughs> wow. You, All right. Yeah, keep All keep right. Guy and Jay and the park. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that can only go wrong so, so many ways so quickly. So, folks, I, I changed the topic kind of at the last minute tonight because I came across an article that I thought was really very interesting. Um, and it's it's on the on Cult of Mac. And I'm going to throw in a second, I'll throw uh, the URL into the chat rooms. Um, 45 ways Apple put a ding in the universe. And usually I shy away from anything that has a list of over five things because it just feels like it's, it's clickbait. This one did hook me. And I was really, really impressed at how many things there were here. We all know the big ones, the Macintosh and the iPhone, but there's so many little things or smaller things along the way that made such a difference that and, and truly were, led the tech industry. And so I, I threw it out to, the, to our panelists and I, we're not going to go through all 45, obviously, but I'm going to ask everybody to pick maybe a favorite or two and throw them in for discussion. So... Um, Jay, since I since I blew your intro, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to pick one and comment on it, and then we'll get started. While you're doing that, I'll throw the uh, link in the chat room so everybody can play. So I just got a new keyboard here, a Keychron K8, and that really made me think about another keyboard that Apple once uh, made me have. And if I if I roll over here really quick. <gasps> Uh, I think that's this this horrible YouTube allows me to curse thing um, that's already been replaced once. Um, yeah. And then also my magic keyboard. So 41 on the list, Apple and Flick's butterfly keyboards onto the world definitely stood out as a a moment that made me laugh a little bit at the idea that Apple was at one point I would almost say so full of themselves that they would make everything as slim as possible until it stopped working. And uh, I take it that's not necessarily a direct quote from me. That's from uh, some of my favorite uh, producers and actors and musicians as it even became a Hollywood meme that people on the red carpet were talking about how bad these keyboards were. So Heiko uh, Watiti, like I've won an Oscar and I'm going to use this moment to say, Apple, fix your keyboard because it makes yeah. me really upset. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I find I find that really interesting because I had to go back, but number 12 um is MacBook Air ushers in thin and light tech. Mm -hmm. So are those the two bookends of the thinness thing? <laughs> we made it thin and then we made it too thin. Thicken it, thicken it. <laughs> 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 basically yeah but i mean it did fit them in an open envelope too you know when when, when steve jobs pulled it out of the envelope the air so it was, it was, was yeah. there wasn't was really anything theater. wrong with the original macbook air the original macbook air's keyboard was was fine it was yeah. the, the 2015 or 2016 macbook air when they went to the butterfly that was i think it was apparently the the new age macbook 
the uh, quote the unquote inch. MacBook adorable. Yeah, the, the MacBook one port. Yeah. The twelve inch Mac MacBook nothing. I think we called it. Yeah, well, it was the, like whole, just the whole MacBook. The whole um, obsession with with thinness. I I never really understood. I mean, you can kind of see it with with laptops. You can kind of understand it. But then when they also went, well, you know what? We're going to make the Mac Mini really thin. It was like, why? It's already like just <laughs> that thick. Or let's let's take the iMac and make it so it can multitask task to cut Parmesan cheese. It's like, no, you really don't have to do that. And it was just like, for whatever reason, the, the design team, Johnny Ives or whoever, just had this 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 thing in their head that everything had to be super thin. And if it couldn't be super thin, then they were going to cancel it. And it, it, it just went beyond ridiculous. Like my microphone obsession. Yeah. No, it's like, like thin yeah. there, there's thin and there's thin right like i mean that's what this comes down to because like there was nothing wrong with the macbook air that came out of that envelope and uh like let me disclaim that entire sentence by saying i was in the room at the steve note where that happened i saw it in person so like all of my memories of this all have a little bit of residual reality distortion field among them so like i know that however what that computer did and what that computer represented for Apple was very, very different than what anyone else was doing. And that was usually what Apple was doing. And those like, not that I'm not going to go through and pick like a bunch of things off the list. What I'm going to tell you is that the ones that stood out the most to me are the things that, that changed the direction of that particular technology in a fundamental way. The iPod changed the way that people listened to music mm -hmm. when they were not home or even when they were home, the, the iPhone changed how people communicated with other people the uh the laser writer like the laser writer made it so that like printing something out at your house could be a thing the mac made it so that you could have a computer yep. in your house and not have it be in a room of your house and not have it take up an entire room of your house desktop like, publishing all those kinds of, like the like the desktop publishing thing that allowed allowed people to pursue that as an avenue the app store allowing people to pursue that as a profession the mac app store like all of these things that have happened over time that have kicked in that door that have made it fundamentally better for a lot of people like apple has done more for portable computing in the last i would say not not even like not even with Macs, Apple has done so much in portable computing with what they've done with the iPhone, what they've done with the iPad, and the portability and the power that they have finally realized that they're giving people with these devices. That those are the kinds of things that, like, when I think about Apple and what kind of impact they've had, that's the kind of stuff I think about. And those are the ones that stand out to me the most. Like, think about what your world would be like if there had not been an iPhone. And think about Nokia what the world would be like if there was no, if there had been no iPod, you know. I think the big stuff. thing with that, though, is I can imagine a world where there was no butterfly keyboard mechanism. <laughs> and that's actually yeah. a pretty can nice I, And world. it's immeasurably better. <laughs> it's a better. Now, Jay, I'm with you on that 100%. I have very strong opinions about keyboards. All the rest of these guys have heard them. Um, I think the, the silver, the PowerBook G4, that silver springy keyboard. That was the last decent laptop keyboard Apple made. And that was the only even okay because it had a reasonable amount of travel. Now, everything that I type on a laptop sounds like a manifesto, even if I'm just replying to email and it's boring. Like, it still sounds like I'm furious all the time. You're not? I'm not. Okay. I mean, not well, I mean... <laughs> Not oh. what I'm writing is not fewer either. I mean, th yeah, that's my secret guy. I'm always, <laughs> I'm always furious. <laughs> David picks something from the list so we can get away from the keyboard question because I, I, I think, I think it's a very valid, it's a very valid point. Yeah. And it does seem to be like there are two ends to it there. And the, the thin thing, you know, we've, we've all talked about that, that there was an obsession of, of, about thin that hopefully is, is not going to be continued to drive things. But what, I'm, uh, uh, is catch you, catch you. Yes. The iPod. I think the iPod was probably one of my most cherished uh, devices back in the day. I mean, if we go back in the days of when we would be ripping CDs and we'd be going on Napster and downloading illegal music and all that stuff and 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 have all we've I've heard, heard 
Yeah, we've, we've heard, heard people did that. Allegedly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and I had hard drives filled of all the uh, of the CDs, my personal CDs that I ripped, you know, uh, of all that music, but nowhere to put them because I would always be listening to them on you know, my computer or, uh, or, or, or wherever. I mean, and I didn't have a Mac at that th- at the, during those times because I, I, I didn't have a Mac until 2005. The iPod came out in 2001. So I, I remember vividly when the first iPod came out, it had the FireWire connector and I had to put a firewire card in my desktop the pc to be able to be able to plug it in it had no itunes at the time but i i did everything i could to get this thing to work because it, you know because it was really it was really at the time it was only supported on a mac but they soon after had to support the pc so um but i just i, I just had to i had to play with that ipod and and have all my you know the five thousand songs in, in in your pocket the uh, uh, and I'm remembering the commercial with the "Take California" was the song. I remember that the song vividly. If you remember that, uh, when and and I, I remember the guy jumping around in, in the ad, and, and that that got me going. And just you know, of a, being a lover of music, I thought I think that was probably one of the the, the best devices that, that that I got to have with with Apple uh, before I got into where I am today. And uh, um, in fact, I, I think I have the first iPod somewhere. I'm going to go to go try and find it. And uh, I want to, I want to just go back down memory lane and see, uh, see if it still works. <laughs> Can you still plug it into firewire to charge it? Yeah. Well, I got to find a firewire. Well, I actually, I have a firewire <laughs> connector here connected to my, to my uh, OWC dock here. So I probably can. Today's Mac voices is supported by clear. Get to the front of the line, faster, safer, touchless. I am delighted to welcome clear as the newest sponsor of Mac voices. Clear is your answer to delays at airports and other mass gathering locations like stadiums and concert halls. When you are a Clear member, you don't need to dig out your ID when going through security, and you don't need to wait at the back of the line. Your face or your eyes are all you need to be recognized and authorized. Once that few-second process is complete, a Clear representative walks you to the head of the security line, and you're through simply and easily. How do I know that it works? How do I know how well it works? I was a clear user before the pandemic, and I will be a clear user as things open up and we all get back on the road. Not just because of the ease of use, but also because it cuts down on the uncertainty of time on getting through the airport. You walk through the clear lane, you walk through security, and you're on your way to your gate. Clear is the absolute best way to get you back in the air with minimal hassles. They have locations in over 35 airports across the country, which means that one is almost certainly close to you. And if you have TSA PreCheck, it works even better. Right now, for a limited time, you can get your first two months of Clear for free. Go to clearme.com slash macvoices and use the code macvoices. That's clear, C-L-E-A-R, me, M-E, dot com slash macvoices with the code macvoices for your first two months of Clear for free. Clearme.com slash macvoices and the code macvoices. I'll see you in the clear lane in the airport. Oh, wait. No, I won't, because there's no waiting. Thanks and welcome to Clear for their support of Mac Voices. So there's so many things, though, about the the iPod. First of all, it got us started us to carrying a device in our pockets. Right. And I mean, so yeah, the music thing, and some some of us were carrying something, at, you know, other than an iPod at some point, but nothing had anywhere near the capacity or the coolness, um, or the ease of of use. Um, but but you know, now we're carrying, you know, the the old iPod internet communicator phone thing in our pockets, you know, all the time. But that that's what struck me because I remember seeing my first iPod in in New York at MacWorld, and. It's like, yeah, immediately that is so much better than what I've been using. And, you know, because I don't know about you guys, but what I was, what whatever I was using at that point was just big and bulky. And if I had a real need for it or desire for it right then, I would do it. But it's not like something I would carry around all the time just in case I would use it. Well, I was definitely carrying a phone around long before that. Uh, yeah. Were you playing music for it? before no but i mean it's a device that i i kept on me all the time from like the mid 90s so long before it's the the ipod i mean i loved my ipod and i had i still have my original one but 
it's definitely not the first device that I carry it around with me all the time. Hmm. I'm trying to remember when I first got my first portable phone. I got mine in 1998. Motorola? So I started carrying a phone. Of course. Um, so I started carrying my phone around in 1998 hmm. and it was not. Um, and I had an iPod shuffle, like the long one that you just take the cap off the bottom of the, the gum pack. And it was yes. the Piece USB of- that you just stick in the yeah. side. Um I, I still have it, um, but that was my first one. And then the one I held up on camera, this is the 5.5 Gen. So this is the iPod video. Um, and uh, it still works. I use it all the time. Um, it's the reason I still have a 30 pin connector, a 30 pin connector cable. Um, is that a Nano? That's a, that's or a is shuffle. That, or is the, that an old, the old shuffle with no wow. nothing at all? That's the yeah. shuffle. I remember that shuffle. Wow, I have... That- yeah, I have. That's a nano. Have, yeah, but I also have the nano that's the clip on nano that they made the wristbands for. And so, like, mm-hmm. I wore that for like a year before I got an Apple Watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But this one I still use all the time. Like, if it, let's see, can I power it up? Because I haven't, I, I used to use it in the car all the time and I don't really get to go anywhere anymore. So it doesn't get as much mileage as it used to. But um I use I still use it all the time and I like it very much and it's still really reliable. It's not as perky, you know, because it's olden. And like we've all moved on. And so like yeah, if I wanted to just stream music off my phone, that would work, you know, just as easily. But um I still get a lot of mileage out of it. And yeah, you know, Chuck, you were talking about what you carried around before to listen to music and I rode the bus a lot still at that point. So what I carried around was like a CD player. Yeah, you know? like a disc man. Yeah. Like what? I had a disc man and that's what I wore on my hour on the bus when I would go to go to and from work each way was that. And so like not only not only getting to upgrade to something where like I had all my music with me, but also this was 80 gigabytes it would back up my entire computer and since most of what was on my computer was mp3s then i had a backup of my computer in my pocket (sighs) like yeah so part of it is sentimental i just think this is an awesome little device and it fits in my hand which is also an advantage i love the way you guys have all these devices right at your command right there (laughs) in front of you know i'm not sure what that says about you but Mm-hmm. I like it. It's just strange. I just remembered this was in the drawer behind me, so that's always easy to get to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The fact that, but isn't it interesting that, you know, we, we still, and because I do it too, I'm trying not to, but I still do it. Uh, yes, I remember that one, Kelly. Um, we we still hold on to these things because they are they still little marvels of engineering, even, even this many years later. There's something about yeah. it that you just don't want to give up. Well, and and it's I not it. like it takes up a lot of space. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you do have a I have a little speaker dock for this that lives in the kitchen. I can drop this on a little dock that is a speaker and then it plays music in the kitchen. Uh-huh. So somebody should like, make something yeah. like that. <laughs> I can't I can't to call it an iPod <laughs> hi fi. <laughs> they they Frank, should make a you? case for it for like a, a sock I actually like thing. I actually somewhere in a box or I was rumbling through things I found. I have an original iPod, but uh, of the 45 things, um, I want to sort of split one of them. I like I lo- the iPhone is just tremendous. But what I really find amazing about it is the camera. Because right now I'm of an age where I'm trying to go through some old discs that may or may not be corrupted. And I'm trying to draw out pictures of my daughter when she was born because I don't have them anymore. They were on, well, they were up on Dropbox and Dropbox lost them all. Uh, But the fact that you can now just pull a camera of a, of a quality, it's just shy of professional to a degree. If you do lighting and all the other stuff, right, it'll look great that you could just take, thousands of pictures and just call through them instead of throwing them in a drawer somewhere and look at them 80 years later and figure which ones you want to keep. To me, that's an amazing thing. I mean, I'm in my mind's eye, I can still see uh, me, my ex and my daughter down at Disney world and my daughter driving one of the uh, electric cars 
Rupia. And every time she drove by, she just pointed at me. And I can vividly see that in my head, but I'd love to be able to put it up on the screen. Mm -hmm. And if I had a camera like this, it would be, that would have been great. Or even better yet, if I had a camera like this, let's say 30 years ago, I, I, I could have taped my, my grandparents. And but boy, that would really be a nice kick in the shin every now and then, you know, if, if you need like a little pump me up or something like that, or you just feel melancholy or sentimental, you, you could look at your grandmother and she could tell you something. And yeah. to me, that is incredible. You're right. I mean, the, the world is being documented and forget the world events, you know, that your families are being better documented mm -hmm. for sharing with subsequent generations than ever yeah. before. And now it's not just in, you know, grainy old black and white photos or even Polaroids, but it's in something that is, you know, mm -hmm. about as lifelike as probably we're ever going to see until we get holograms. So yeah, I, I agree with you, Frank. Uh, and the camera just keeps, keeps getting better. And it's, we all we all say, gee, I want I wanted to get better. I wanted to get better. Right now, it's it's amazing. You know, you should not overlook it because um, it's to your point, Frank. You know, I mean, it's 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 one way to archive some of the old paper photos. You oh, know, I do while, all my we, stuff now. The Brittany got me into the thing because uh, my desk is so cluttered with paper. I made it a point this year that everything gets scanned with either my iPhone or my iPad into preview. And I just filed away. So I don't, the pile stopped going above four inches. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And like, I think it was the, the five or the five S where the camera became a high powered enough camera that you could get a print quality. Yeah. Like if you took a picture of a document and then printed out the picture that you took, it would be high enough quality to be yeah, indistinguishable from the one didn't the original. Look like a Fisher Price camera. I think it was, yeah, I think it was like the five or the five S where you stopped getting this looks like a low res copy of yeah. the original where you could put them side by side and they would look the same. And I think like from that point forward, I think what you're talking about, Frank, is a thing that sometimes gets overlooked. Like everybody wants to take these fantastic pictures and everything, but not everybody realizes like. It's an awesome document scanner. It is. Like, I think the first time Apple ever said the words document scanner was like the iOS 14 preview stuff, 13 or 14, where we got the document scanning feature that works with Mac OS, where you can, um, you know, hit the document scanner and mark up mm -hmm. and then, you know, send it to your Mac seamlessly or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, it is. It's, I, I agree with you, Frank. And the other thing too, about that particular pick is this list is filled with, industry changing and sometimes industry killing or industry altering items. And that's exactly what we're seeing with the photography industry. There's still definitely a place for DSLRs and all the, the super high powered cameras for the pros, mm -hmm. but the, 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 the floor has shifted way up. And now if you can, yes, you can still go and buy a point and shoot and it still has one or two advantages over, over an iPhone, um, notably probably the um, a, a zoom Price. lens. Well, price price is kind of questionable because if you're going to buy the if you're buying the phone anyway, you've got the camera. Well, but yeah, true. You know, it's it, as as far as just something that can change things. So you know, I think we're seeing a lot of the lower end stuff go away, and we still haven't seen the photography industry adopt computational computing in the higher end. And so I, well, I feel like something's of, happening. A lot of the film industry is going over to learning how to do iPhone photography and filming. Uh, in China, they do a lot of their major releases on iPhones. Uh, if you see the events like Telluride and South by Southwest, a lot of the, vi the films that are coming out are being shot on iPhones. The only, dif there's, the only difference is the camera itself. I mean, you still have to have the story. You still have to have lighting. You still have to have good sound people good actors, a good story, the whole nine yards. But the camera, to have it that small, you can put it in place. Well, look at anything you see on TV now. Where they, they always have to do a drone shot. And I've, I've sat and watched stuff on YouTube. The most uninteresting, bland stuff you can think of. 
But because it was shot with a drone and it just runs so smooth, I found my I find myself transfixed by it. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Jim, um, I wanted to ask you about number 38. I want to give you a chance to pick, but you're you're sort of our resident developer. Number 38 is apps become the dominant form of software. You think that's an overstatement? Or do you think that's pretty much true? Well, I thought that was a weird, this is a weird list. Um, one thing I noticed, I did a search, Wi-Fi isn't mentioned anywhere on the list. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe Apple had the first uh, computer with Wi-Fi. Um, I don't I think. Yeah, number 24, iBook turns us on yeah, to Wi-Fi. Yeah, but it was like an aside, I think. How come I did a search and Safari didn't find did it? Did you put the hyphen in Wi-Fi? <laughs> no. Yeah, they, they, okay. they used it. Yep, there it is. Okay. Yeah. My apologies. So anyway, I mean, you know, apps, I mean, programs, whatever. It's just what you call the name of something. Um, you know, so, you know, I, I, I guess, you know, the fact that a bunch more people had computers and, you know, the, you know, the app store is sort of more of a, you know, that made, you know, people were buying programs that weren't before. So that's, that's kind of a, you know, the thing, but the fact that they're called apps, you know, so what, I don't know, but the app, <laughs> the, the app store, um, you know, Apple, there, there were some small little app stores before, but Apple really, you know, and of course that story is like over and over again on this, you know, for Apple, like, well, somebody else did it. And then Apple, um, did it better. They, yeah, well, they, I mean, they, they brought it to the masses. So, yeah. you know, my pick is this, you know, going to be the, the, the same idea, which my pick is 22. I think that's the biggest one on this list. GUI conquers the computing world. Um, you know, if you go back, you know, to 1984, I mean, the world was all command line. Mm -hmm. You know, everything was command line. And, you know, I'm sure that would have happened eventually. But, you know, I, I think the Lisa and the Mac brought that, you know, forward mm -hmm. quite a lot. Um, yeah. You know, and, and, and no, it was a long time, you know, I mean, really, the Windows world didn't follow really until, you know, uh, Windows 95. So 11 years later, I mean, there were versions of Windows, but very few people use them. So because they were terrible. Because they were terrible. Yes. And nobody could figure anything out because they were terrible. Oh, they, well, they and they were, were they were company. also they were also very terrible from a developer point of view. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really really hard to write software for yeah. for, for um, early versions of Windows. Yeah, uh, not that Windows ninety five was really great. It was still terrible <laughs> compared to the Macintosh. Well, um, you know, right. and and that you know that's sort of an overall thing that I would say that's not on this list, but. You know, Apple tends to do things well. They execute well, um, which is part of why they're able to come in and, you know, take over things. Well, they didn't have the first MP3 player. Um, certainly cameras. We were talking about cameras. Mm -hmm. that We'd have cameras. You know, at, you, you know, if Apple didn't exist, we'd, we'd still have this revolution of, of cameras. That, that would have that happened anyway. But Apple had it, you know, they are really good at engineering and at, at, you know, bringing things in and not doing things slapdash, but figuring out how to do things correctly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I have developed for Windows 95, which are, that was better than the earlier ones. And, but it was a nightmare. And there was all this, you know, these, like they, they you know, on Windows, they tend to have all these things, like they have API calls and they would have these reserved AP, you know, like here's parameters and then there'd be like reserve for future because, you know, we're not really sure we figured this out. <laughs> um, so we're going to leave a space where, we, you know, we can, you know, we can do something. I've never, ever seen that on any Apple API. They've, they've never done that. So, you know, either they figure it out or they just make an architecture that's, you know, expandable where, you know, if they, if they need to add something later, 
the way that thing is architected, it's naturally flows, but they never have a, you know, this space reserved because we're not sure we figured this out. Um, so, you know, you, you can see that in so many of the things on this list where, you know, Apple engineering, the, they, they mentioned the processor uh, changes from 68K to PowerPC to Intel and now to M1. Um, you know, that's like a miracle. And Apple makes it look so easy that now we're just like, of course. But who else has done that? No one. Mm -hmm. Not no, There's no other vendor ever in the history of computers that has changed their main flat platform successfully from one processor to another. Uh, mm -hmm. And Apple just does it, makes it look so easy that, um, you know, people just, you know, they don't even appreciate that. Wow, this this is like a miracle. Yeah, they did it three times. That wraps up the first part of what turned out to be an extremely long, multifaceted discussion of the Cult of Mac article about Apple dinging the universe. Not everybody agreed on everything. Next time, we start off with a discussion of how Apple sets some of the guidelines and rules for user interface elements and the like that survive even today and how they affected other platforms' development. That's next time on Mac Voices. Until then, and as always, I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.